All right, this next story will affect all over-the-air antenna TV viewers across the U.S. Before I get into the topic of today's video, please watch and listen to the entire video carefully so you understand the situation fully and do not jump to conclusions or panic. The National Association of Broadcasters, which is the largest lobby group representing TV and radio broadcasters in the U.S., is requesting by petition that the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, set a firm date for the shutdown of ATSC-1 over-the-air TV signals to pave the way for a full nationwide transition to ATSC-3 next-gen TV by February 2028. They sent a 31-page petition to the FCC this week, and I read through the whole petition myself. It lays out their vision and several suggestions to hasten the transition to next-gen television and eliminate the ATSC-1 TV standard across the board. The proposed transition would take place in two phases. The first phase of the transition would affect about 70% of U.S. over-the-air TV viewers. That's made up of the 55 largest TV markets in the country. If this plan were to happen, that would mean that after this date in February 2028, you would need a TV that has an ATSC3 tuner, or you'd have to buy a set-top box capable of receiving ATSC3 over-the-air TV signals. Your digital converter boxes and older TVs that only have an ATSC-1 tuner in them would no longer work to receive any over-the-air TV signals. The only exceptions to this rule would be low-power TV stations and non-commercial TV stations that would temporarily continue to broadcast an ATSC-1. They would be given an extension in order to upgrade their equipment and transmitters, to make the transition to ATSC-3 at a later date. The second phase of this rollout would take place by February 2030, and that would include all remaining TV stations shutting down their ATSC-1 signals and moving fully to ATSC-3 next-gen TV signals only. This petition marks a big change from the voluntary, self-paced approach that has been taken so far with the next-gen TV rollout. If things unfold the way this petition envisions, this would mean a flash cut to next-gen TV and a shutdown of the current over-the-air TV standard, ATSC-1, over the next five years. But for most viewers, if this suggested plan is adopted by the FCC, it's going to happen much sooner than that. It'll take about three years because the February 2028 date applies to 70% of U.S. TV markets. This petition also makes numerous suggestions to guide this proposed transition, including eliminating a very important broadcast rule called the Substantially Similar Rule, which is already set to expire in July of 2027. This rule makes it mandatory that any TV station broadcasting an ATSC-3 next-gen signal must also broadcast an ATSC-1 signal alongside that is substantially similar or essentially the same as the next-gen TV signal. If this rule is eliminated, that would mean TV stations could shut down their ATSC-1 signal at any point in time and fully transition to next-gen TV. That could leave a lot of viewers in the dark unless they already have a set-top box or TV capable of receiving next-gen TV signals. Now, no doubt some TV stations will keep their ATSC-1 signal on the air until it's absolutely necessary to shut them off, but there could be other ones that will shut it down as soon as possible because it is costly keeping two similar TV signals on the air. However, forcing viewers onto another TV standard like this is not the best way to go in my opinion, especially with the lack of readily available and affordable next-gen tuner boxes and TVs that have a built-in ATSC3 tuner. By abruptly cutting off the ATSC1 signal, some viewers would not even bother with over-the-air television anymore at all. But regardless of whether or not the substantially similar rule was eliminated earlier, 
all TV stations in that top 70% of markets would have to shut down their ATSC-1 signals by the proposed February 2028 date if this plan was to come to fruition. Some other proposed rule changes include setting a rule to make it mandatory to include ATSC-3 next-gen tuners in all TVs sold in the U.S. by the proposed transition date in February 2028. Another proposed rule that might actually be beneficial is giving over-the-air TV more prominence on TV menus and remote controls. For example, making it easier for viewers to find channel scan tools in their TV's menu, or even having a specific button on the remote control that allows viewers to switch to over-the-air TV quickly, rather than having to go through cumbersome input setting menus or some other process to find their over-the-air TV channels. This could be beneficial to viewers because they could more quickly access over-the-air TV signals, especially in the case of an emergency or natural disaster. Viewers would have quicker, easier access to local life-saving information with features like an over-the-air shortcut button on the remote control. I like the fact that the National Association of Broadcasters makes the point about more loosely regulated services such as paid streaming services, having more emphasis in TV menus over broadcast television, and adding some features like this to TVs would give over-the-air television a more prominent place on the TV's interface. Instead of being something that's kind of hidden away deep in a menu, making it hard for viewers to find. I do think that overall, broadcast TV is an afterthought for most TV models available today. Now, while it might sound like a good idea to mandate a next-gen TV tuner in all televisions sold in the U.S. and to make over-the-air broadcast TV features more prominent on televisions, there's already been pushback on this issue from consumer electronics groups on mandating these types of features on TV sold in the U.S. One of their main counterpoints is citing the added costs to building these features into TVs, which no doubt will be passed on to the consumer through higher retail prices. Now, of course, a major hair in the soup with the next-gen TV rollout has been DRM encryption. It's only briefly mentioned in this petition, though, mainly in the context of the ATSC3 Security Authorities broadcast encoding rules relating to viewers' ability to record, pause, rewind, skip ads, those so-called trick play features. But remember, those rules only apply to ATSC3 stations that are running a simulcast of an ATSC1 broadcast. So what's going to happen to those rules when ATSC1 shuts down? Will viewers lose the ability to pause, record, rewind, skip ads? It's very possible they will, since those rules don't offer any guarantees of trick play features on ATSC3 broadcasts without an ATSC1 simulcast. None of these questions are answered or even addressed in this petition. There are still stations across the U.S. that viewers are not able to watch due to DRM encryption. There is still a lot of stuff to be worked out there. In particular, viewing and recording DRM encrypted channels with or without an internet connection. In this petition, DRM is not acknowledged as a major roadblock for next-gen TV viewers, which it really is. It should be a seamless process if DRM is going to be implemented. And certainly, it seems more and more like that is going to be the case. If DRM is going to stay, and I personally think, unfortunately, it will, it should be something that runs in the background and does not interfere with viewers watching, recording, pausing, rewinding, or fast-forwarding encrypted channels on certified receivers that they have paid for. I am not in favor of a full transition to ATSC3 and an across-the-board shutdown of ATSC1 by a hard date. There are still many issues to work out before a full transition to next-gen TV, 
which will take much longer than the timeline suggested in this petition from broadcasters. The current chair of the FCC, Brendan Carr, has stated he is in favor of setting a firm date for transitioning to next-gen TV, and as well making more efficient use of the broadcast spectrum, up to and including spectrum incentive auctions. I do think it's a real possibility we could see the abrupt shutdown of ATSC-1 if the FCC chooses to pursue an aggressive plan such as this one laid out by broadcasters in this petition. This would free up some TV spectrum, and I fear that even more of the -the over-the-air spectrum could be sold off to cell phone companies to advance 5G wireless coverage. There are still lots of loose ends, though, and an abrupt cutoff of ATSC-1 signals will leave a lot of viewers without any over-the-air television. Their only choice is going to be to buy a next-gen TV or tuner to receive their local over-the-air stations. But as I said, there are not enough affordable next-gen tuner boxes available on the market yet for starters. And how many TV stations are going to be able to make the necessary transmitter and equipment upgrades in the next three years to be ready for such a move? My hope is there will be a softer transition, where ATSC-1 can at least stay on the air a little longer, or provide primary network signals such as NBC, Fox, PBS, CBS, ABC, and CW for viewers that need ATSC-1 signals, though these signals would likely be broadcast at a lower resolution, most likely standard definition only. This is actually a suggestion that was made in the Future of Television Initiative report released back in January by, you guessed it, the National Association of Broadcasters and could come in the form of a nightlight station which would continue to host an ATSC-1 signal for all major networks in a TV market for at least a little longer to make the transition easier for viewers. I think this might be an option that they should really explore if the transition is going to flash cut to next-gen TV in February 2028 like the broadcasters envision. And honestly, if all of the nightlight signals were standard definition anyways and made permanent, that would not use up too much bandwidth in a TV market anyways, but it would provide a very valuable public service. And there are other reasons why the broadcasters plan to abruptly move to next-gen TV is not going to work. One of them has to do with cable companies. For the most part, cable companies are going to have to bear massive costs to upgrade their equipment, and in turn, customers are also going to have to upgrade their equipment because they're all going to need equipment that is going to be able to decode and re-encode, decrypt and re-encrypt next-gen TV signals according to the standard, and that alone is going to take a lot of time and expense for cable companies as well as direct-to-home satellite services. And for their customers, that means they're going to be enduring the cost of new equipment rentals or purchases for cable boxes or receivers that are next-gen compatible. Now, if you're still watching and listening to the video at this point, thank you. I think it's very important to remember that this is a petition, though. It's a request. It is not been officially decreed as a new set of rules by the FCC. It's entirely possible the transition to ATSC-3 could take much longer than this abrupt path that has been suggested by the National Association of Broadcasters. Bottom line is there is still lots of work to be done to prepare for such a transition. Next-gen TVs and set-top boxes are needed at all price levels, especially affordable ones. This would also leave most of the TVs in the U.S. useless for receiving over-the-air TV signals to basically flash-cut to next-gen TV by shutting down ATSC-1 signals. 
Plus, the issue of DRM needs to be solved. As I said, it's very unlikely to go away, but it needs to be set up so that it does not interfere with viewers' ability to receive free over-the-air television in any way. I think this proposal will fail if it is implemented according to the timeline suggested. Consumers are simply not ready for the transition to next-gen TV yet. Not nearly enough consumers have purchased TVs or set-top boxes to receive next-gen TV signals. Not to mention, manufacturers have been hesitant to build next-gen tuners into TVs due to licensing and patent right disputes, meaning they're basically afraid of being sued by ATSC3 technology patent holders for royalty fees. Not all TV stations have upgraded transmitters and equipment to be ready for the February 2028 transition date. And cable TV companies and direct-to-home satellite distributors must still upgrade all their equipment to distribute next-gen TV signals to their customers. However, viewers should be aware that this transition could happen as broadcasters envision it, especially given the position that FCC Chair Brendan Carr has assumed regarding broadcast TV in general. Now, while I'm not going to suggest running out and buying a TV or set-top box with a next-gen tuner, viewers should be aware that they may need to pivot in order to keep receiving over-the-air television in the event the FCC adopts this plan that broadcasters have laid out. But again, no decision has been made yet, so I would say at this point... Take a wait-and-see approach to find out what direction the FCC is going to go. There is simply not enough time and not enough consumer adoption yet due to affordable pricing and availability of next-gen TVs and set-top boxes. DRM decryption remains a major stumbling block that has turned a lot of viewers off of the idea of next-gen television. Over-the-air TV viewers have made their voice clear so far. They are not ready or willing to move away from ATSC-1 TV just yet and certainly not ready to adopt ATSC-3 next-gen television as the new TV standard and forcing it on viewers while taking away a TV standard that millions of viewers rely on is not serving the best interests of the public. Check the video description for more information about this story You can find links to the petition that broadcasters have submitted to the FCC as well as other information. And please stay tuned to my channel for more updates on this and many other stories.